In this video, I'm gonna share with you five Procreate tools that I use on almost every character design project. Plus, I've got some free brushes for you to download at the end of this video. The first tool is the Quick Shape tool, and this is a really easy way to create straight lines and other polygons. And it's really just as simple as drawing the shape or the line that you want and then holding, and the program will do the rest for you. And you can do this with any shape, including circles, triangles, and squares. And the cool thing too is that you can alter the shape just by dragging your pen back and forth. The other cool thing you can do with this is if you've got an arc or a curved line that you wanna draw, you can draw that arc and hold your pen down and the app will automatically smooth and streamline it. This can be really great for shape heavy character designs. So for example, you can see here in the sketch of her broom that it's kind of wobbly. And I can fix that super easy by using the quick shape tool, just by drawing the arc that I want, holding it down. And it's great because I can make all kinds of arcs. Same goes with the handle of her broomstick. It's a pretty straight line. So instead of getting a ruler and sticking on my iPad, just draw the line and hold it and the app does the rest for me. This can also be really helpful for creating really quick guides. If I was gonna turn this into a turnaround, I could draw a really quick line across from the points of interest on her face. So that when I go and draw her in a three quarters or a profile view, I can make sure that her nose is gonna line up right there on that same line that's on the other drawing and make sure that her eyebrows are also on that same line. The next tip I have for you is transfer modes. This can also sometimes be called blend modes or layer styles. Now, if you go into your layers, there's gonna be this little N here by the toggle for showing the layer off and on. And that N stands for normal because if you go through this whole list, there are tons of blend modes. So there's so many and you could spend a long time playing with each one, getting to know them. But my top three that I use on pretty much every single piece are going to be multiply, overlay, and the color. So starting with multiply, multiply creates a darkening effect depending on the luminosity of the layer beneath it. And it basically just makes a really great intense dark effect. It's great for shadows. So say I'm working on this illustration and I actually want that shadow under her chin to be a little darker. I make sure that I've got a new layer on top of my illustration. I've set it to multiply and using a great shading brush, I'm going to pick a color that is going to be more of a cool tone for the shadows. So maybe this blue color right here and I'm gonna start blending in under her chin. And as you can see, that's creating a shadow effect. And with multiply, if I keep adding onto it, the darker and more intense it's gonna get. Say for instance, I picked this pink color and I go in with that multiply layer. I'm gonna get a different result than the cool tone. So it does matter what color you choose and also the darkness of the color. So these are kind of mid-tones. If I went and made a new multiply layer and grabbed this really dark color right here from our hair, that's gonna be a lot more intense. And honestly, it's too dark for what I'm going for. So using that mid-tone is a much better option. The next one that I use the most is the overlay layer. And this is great for creating some really bright spots of light or intensity. It's great for blocking in a light source. So I grabbed this color on her cheek because we've got this warm pink color and say I wanted to have more of a gradient of light crossing her face. I can set my layer to overlay and now I can kind of go in and that's going to lighten her face a little bit and it's also going to brighten and saturate the colors. If I went in and even made this closer to white I'd get a more intense effect. This just gives more of an appearance of being lit from maybe a more intense light source. For something really intense like a highlight or a even rim lighting, you could set your layer to add. Honestly, a lot of these lighter color, soft light, hard light do kind of similar things. And you can just play around and see which one you like the most. I can go and use this to add a quick and easy rim lighting on her hair. And same down here on her skin. Okay. 
And always, if it's too intense for you, you can go into the opacity and play around with that and find a spot that that looks the best to you. The last one is color. And this is great for if you're working on a project, you've already started rendering it, getting all the details in, and either you or a client says, I do not like how pink that skin is. I want it to be more purple. Well, if you weren't painting digitally, you would have to go and repaint it. But because we're in Procreate, we can actually go and pick the color that we wanna change it to. So say we wanted it to be purple, just pick the hue that we want. Make sure that our layer is set to color. And now I can change her skin to purple. And it is as easy as that. It keeps the shadows, it keeps the texture, it only changes the hue. Such a great hack if you're deciding that you really hate the color that you pick for your character. And like here on the hair, you can see, that just totally changes it. It's kind of like magic. The next tool is going to be transform tools. And this is really great for the beginning stages of a character design while you're sketching and trying to work out the proportions and the shapes. So I've got this sketch here, and this is supposed to be a character for a middle grade book. And after I've done the sketch, I've kind of realized that she's looking a little too old for an age range of eight to 10. So I need to do some altering on her facial proportions to get her there. So I could either redraw it all or I could use some transform tools and play around with her proportions and then draw on top. So using the lasso tool and transform tools are gonna to be really powerful. So grabbing my lasso tool, it's gonna be this freehand spot here at the bottom. I can first grab her head and it's probably a little too long. So once I hit the arrow button there at the top, I'm gonna to be given some options. I've got freeform, uniform, distort, and warp and all are really great. Freeform kind of lets you just grab the different areas and alter according to the X, Y, and also if you grab here at the corner, it's gonna do uniform. If I do uniform, it's just gonna keep it the same proportions. I can't alter them at all. But then if I do distort, I can grab the corners here instead of keeping it uniform, it will kind of make it go really wonky. This is also really great if you want to get something to be more at like a perspective, maybe turning away. You can use this to kind of mimic that. Look, that already kind of looks like she's turning more from the viewer. And then lastly, warp gives us multiple points that we can drag and do all kinds of wacky stuff with. So if I were looking at this and saying, all right, we gotta make her look younger, I would probably grab the freeform first and I'm just gonna make her head shorter. Maybe I'll grab the distort and just kind of want her head to be a little rounder. Also, because this is supposed to be someone younger, I'm just gonna grab uniform and make her head bigger because kids have bigger heads. All right, next I need to do her face. So this is where I'm gonna use a tool called Liquify. And if you go down here in adjustments, it's at the bottom. We have these really cool options for using the Liquify tool. And I wanna make her eyes bigger so I can hit expand right here and adjust the size of the brush. And if I just kind of hold that on her eye, it's just gonna make her eyes a lot bigger. And that already is making her look younger. I could also hit pinch and I can make her mouth a little smaller. Now, I also think that I need to push her nose up to make her look even more younger. I can use push and I can adjust the size of my brush, make it a little bigger so that I can grab her nose and her mouth and push those up closer to her eyes and also grab her chin and push that up as well just kind of pushing things around to get the look that I want. So now I've got her to be closer to the proportions that I want this character so that when I throw that on opacity and do a new layer, I can sketch on top of her and use this as a guide for my next iteration of this character design. And now she's gonna look closer to the age range that I want for my audience. 
By the way, if you want to learn my entire process for drawing and designing characters that I use professionally, check out my School of Motion course, Character Design Fundamentals, but more on that later. My next tool for you is layers and clipping masks. This is a really great way to easily add shadows, details, patterns, whatever, to a character design. So here I've got my character and you can see I've started to shade her on her face and her hair, but her clothes need a little help. So in my layers, you'll see I've already blocked out each piece of this character. I've got her hair, her shoes, each piece has its own layer. So her pants and socks are on a layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this plus sign, make a new layer. I'm gonna tap on the layer. I'm gonna hit clipping mask. What this does now is any mark that I make on this layer is going to only show up on top of the pixels of the layer up below it. So just to show you simply, if I'm going to draw on this layer, it's only gonna show up on the pants or the socks. So this is great because I'm wanting to add a pattern to these pants and also some shadows and lights. So I'm gonna go and grab this darker color and now I can go and add my stripes. And I don't have to be too careful about where I'm drawing because it's not gonna end up on her skin. It's not gonna accidentally go up onto her sweater if I hit the stroke too far. I can just focus on getting the pattern that I want. So once I've got my pattern, I wanna go and add some shadows. So using our last tip from the layer styles, go ahead and make a new layer on top, set that to multiply. I'm gonna pick a slightly lighter color and now I can go and add my shadows. And it's gonna darken not only the pants layer on the bottom, but it's also darkening the pattern that I added on top of it. So I'm not going having to go in and color the little light lines in between and then the dark lines. That would take so much longer than just using a layer style. And then for added effect, if I wanted to have some highlights on those pants, can turn it into an add layer grab this light color and now I've got some highlights. Once I've decided that I like the pants and I'm not really gonna work on it that much more, I personally like to collapse my layers just to keep my layers manageable. I don't want too many layers confusing me and cluttering up my workspace. All right, my last tool for you is going to be a great one for somebody who is new to drawing and isn't quite comfortable yet drawing maybe doesn't have a lot of experience, doesn't know quite yet how to control their hand. And this is gonna be brush stabilization. So I've got this character design, I'm ready to ink it, take it to its final form. So I've got my studio pen here, which is a great lining pen in Procreate. And if you tap on it, we can go into the stroke properties. And if we hit stabilization right here, we've got streamline and stabilization. So what streamline does and this is without any help from Procreate. You'll see that the line can be a little wobbly. It's maybe a little harder to get a perfect curve. But if I turn these both on to 100%, when I draw a line, Procreate is, and you can see this looks super wonky. It's going to kick in there and streamline it for me. So you're never gonna wanna <laughs> draw with 100% stabilization. That would be super annoying. But if you brought it down to say maybe 50%, that is really gonna get you some smooth lines. And you can see it, it's a little weird looking as I'm laying down the lines because that's the computer altering my stroke for me. But you'll see that when I come over here to my character design, when I start lining his face, I really don't have to put much effort to get some like really smooth looking line art. As you train your hand and you draw more and get more experience, you're actually probably going to want to start dropping your stabilization more and more just because it can be kind of annoying when the computer completely overwrites something that you actually meant to be maybe a little wonky or 
it alters the path of a curve. So yeah, just keep drawing and you'll find that you'll need less and less stabilization, but it's a really great tool for someone who's just starting out. Procreate's brush engine is really powerful and you can create some really beautiful, realistic and useful brushes once you get the hang of it. I've put together a free set of five brushes that you can download and use right away. Follow the link in the description and grab them. I hope you learned a trick or two that you didn't know about Procreate. If you want to go deep into the art and science of character design, check out my course, Character Design Fundamentals. This course is for any artist who wants to improve their character designs and learn how to come up with and illustrate compelling character designs for any animation project. You'll also learn a ton of drawing tips and have a blast while you're doing it. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything. And I hope to see you in class.